good morning everyone uh, i welcome you all in this session uh, in this session we are going to discuss some of the points related to technical analysis of the project as you are aware uh, we need to scrutinize our projects on several criteria broadly we can say that we should analyze our projects on pastel analysis and pastel analysis is nothing but you have got uh, political analysis economic analysis social economy social analysis technological analysis legal analysis and environmental analysis so we have seen couple of analysis and now we are uh, going to see in this session technical analysis what is technical analysis whenever you go for any project let's say if you are going to construct a building now you need to look at several technical aspects uh, let's say how many floors you want what is the strength of the soil how many beams are needed how many columns are needed what would be different forces what are different stresses isn't it what, what should be the dimension of steel the, you know characteristics of cement and all those things so there are hundreds of technical parameters when you come up with a building right similarly if you take any other project then also you will have to look at several technical aspects so in this session we are going to cover manufacturing processes uh, which you should follow in your project technical arrangements what are different technical arrangements needed materials and inputs because whatever technology you are going to use uh, you need to see what are different inputs because inputs will play the use of appropriate technology product mix product mix is something wherein you need to decide how many products you want you, you cannot manufacture all the products required by by customers because of several constraints so you need to decide on product mix what is your plant capacity right and plant capacity is is related to technology so if you are using a better technology you will have a better plant capacity location and site selection machineries and equipment structures and civil works these two are important aspects environmental aspects you need to look at before starting a project because you need to come up with let's say effluent plant isn't it so how you are disposing of your waste stages which are coming out of processes so then you have got project charts and layouts how to prepare these charts project implementation schedule and need for considering alternatives so these are couple of things which we are going to see in today's session so the most important point is manufacturing processes whenever you make a product you will most of the times have different methods of manufacturing a product in very few situations you will have only one manufacturing process to make a product for example let's say if you are making steel right so you can either go for bessemer process or open hearth process right similarly let's say if you are having cement plant right so how you are making cement either dry process or wet process right so you can have multiple processes to make a product which one should be chosen that is uh, that's that's quite a uh, critical decision right so look at your manufacturing processes and adopt appropriate technology then you have got choice of technology which technology you should prefer and there are again several factors which would decide what kind of technology you should choose plant capacity is one of the considerations you should take care of while choosing technology because there is a, a relationship between plant capacity and technology do you think is there any relationship between plant capacity and technology if there is any relationship is that positive or negative just think for a while 
is there any relationship between plant capacity and technology? Yes, th there is a positive relationship. If you have got a better technology, then you will have more capacity, right? So, they are directly proportional to each other. So, better technology will give you more plant capacity, right? Principal inputs would decide what kind of technology you would like to choose. For example, uh, if you are making cement, then you can either go for dry process or wet process, then use appropriate technology for that. For example, quality of limestone in cement plant will determine what kind of technology you are going to use or the technology will have certain requirements. So, if you are using let us say technology A, then you need to use input material A, right? If you are using let us say technology B, then input material should be B, right? You, you cannot have a different input material for, for, uh, for a technology which you are going to adopt, right? So, there has to be one to one match between principal inputs and technology which you are choosing. Investment outlay and production cost, because whenever you are going for any technology, you need to invest in that technology. And when you invest in technology, you should look at different sources of funds, right, from where you are getting those funds. When you use, uh, when you choose a particular technology, then uh, that technology will either increase the cost or decrease the cost. But if you are using, let us say, a better technology, right, then generally the cost of the production would decrease, right. So, again, there is a close relationship between investment, production cost, and technology which you are choosing, right. Used by other units. Now, you should look at the uh, those technologies which are being used by, let us say for, uh, for example, your competitors, how that technology uh, is, is giving benefits to your competitor. So, you can uh, look at those technologies, uh, whether those technologies are yielding profits or not, right. Product mix, as I have already said, uh, since you are in, in a business, you cannot make all the products required by customers so you need to have a combination of product mix right you can you you cannot choose all the products which are needed by customers right latest developments we should take care of what are latest developments taking place in the field of technology so you should try to use appropriate technology and you should see issues like obsolescence and try to minimize losses due to obsolescence. Ob obsolescence is nothing but uh, the, the older technology is being replaced by newer technology, right. So, ease of absorption, how easily you can absorb a particular technology, uh, again there are several issues. Generally, high end technology may take long time and it requires trained people. So, choice of technology depends on several factors, right. These are couple of factors we have discussed. Now, what are different sources of technology? From where you can get technology? Just think over, over this about this question. I, either you develop technology or you buy technology, right. So, these are broadly two sources, but there are other sources as well, right, but broadly two sources, right, either you develop or you buy from some other, uh, uh, some other player, right. So, there is something called technology transfer, Trans technology transfer is nothing but how the knowledge, how the, the, the techniques, how the innovations are moving from one organization to another organization or between two countries, right. So, this is nothing but technology transfer and it can be, it can happen in several ways. For example, let us say uh, through investment or through licensing or franchisee, 
in licensing or franchisee either you completely get technical know how from let us say supplier or you are getting part of the technology from supplier right. It can be through trade or it can be through training is not it or it, it can be through assistance by, by one country to another country. So, these are couple of ways in which technology transfer is possible. Now, many times what happens let us say uh, you are producing uh, 100 units per hour from you uh, uh, using a machine and you want to increase your uh, production. So, let us go for a new equipment. Now, when you buy a new equipment you will have a better technology inbuilt into that equipment. So, you can get technology uh, or technology transfer can be through equipment and machines also. Uh, it can be uh, in fact, there is something called turnkey projects. Turnkey projects are, are those projects wherein you get everything from uh, let us say supplier of the technology. You will, you will be getting equipment, you will be getting process know how. In fact, they would erect that machine for you in your plant, they will do commissioning, they will train your people. In fact, they will uh, go for you know uh, after sale services also. So, this is another way of technology transfer and of course, uh, joint ventures uh, is, is one of the ways of technology transfer. So, there are several uh, companies in India uh, which are working with uh, foreign companies as a joint venture right. So, you can have example of let us say let us say Hero Honda right. So, you have got an Indian company and you have got a foreign company right. So, technology is coming through uh, a Japanese company that is Honda and uh, we have got our own company Hero right. So, and you can think of several such examples right. Now, there are different ways in which technology transfer is possible. It can be through adoption, it can be through adaption, absorption or diffusion. So, we will see these four stages of technology transfer. First of all, we will see what is adoption, right. Adoption is basically, uh, let us say if you are going to have a new technology for your plant and you have chosen a supplier. So, supplier will supply you only those technologies for which you have asked for because you have given a set of information to supplier and then accordingly he will modify his technologies and he will give to you right. So, that is nothing but adoption right. So, you will not get entire technology from supplier you will get whatever you have demanded or whatever you have asked for. So, adoption there is the second stage is adoption. Now, many times you get technology from supplier, but you being a user modify the technology. So, that you can uh, you know so that it can be uh, it can be used in an efficient manner at your end right. So, you are just modifying technology uh, supplied by supplier. The third one is absorption. Now, absorption is basically uh, 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 a method wherein you are unpacking technology by as a supplied by supplier and you are upgrading. So, you are not just using the uh, technology given by supplier, but you are upgrading it by unpacking technology right and the fourth one is diffusion. Let us say uh, you have obtained a technology from supplier for let us say purpose A. If you are using that technology for other purposes also then it is called diffusion and this is this is good way, good 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 example of you know using uh, a technology, but uh, it again depends on terms and conditions between buyer and seller of technology right. So, let us say if I have got a technology for uh, using um, for a particular purpose and if uh, the sub if the supplier is ready 
to uh, allow me to use it for some other purposes then I only I can use it right otherwise I cannot. So, diffusion is nothing but application of technology for purpose other than for which you have bought that technology. So, these are four stages of technology transfer. Now, when you should as I said there are basically two sources of technology uh, you either you develop it or you buy it right. So, let us say if you are coming up with a with a new project and it is it is a green field project right. So, what kind of decision you should take you should develop technology or you should you should have transfer you should transfer technology or you should obtain through transfer what would be your decision in a greenfield project. What is greenfield project? Uh, greenfield project is a project which is uh, a new project right, uh, it is not a kind of expansion project right, you are coming up with something, something new right, uh, let us say uh, something uh, a new startup right. So, what kind of uh, decision will you take, will you develop technology or the transfer route is a better one. So, in, in cases like greenfield projects it is good to get technology from supplier right, you do not develop is not it because development of technology takes lots of time and lots of investment also right. So, it is good to get it through technology transfer route right. Now, let us say if your project is in growth stage or growth phase and you need a technology what you should do, should you develop a technology or you should get it through transfer route, just think for a while. Growth stage, now in growth stage also you should not develop technology, you should obtain it from supplier of the technology, why? because you need more focus in growth stage right and growth stage is a stage where uh, you, you, you should not uh, you should not be wasting time in development of technology right. So, it is good to obtain from supplier. Now, nowadays what is happening most of the products you would have seen that their life cycles are getting squeezed is not it. So, for example, let us say mobile phone. So, every uh, 3 months or every uh, you know 2 months you are getting an, a new mobile phone. So, should you develop new technology or you should get it through transfer route. Now, in this situation also you should also go for transfer of technology not for not for development of technology right. So, these are couple of examples where in each in which the transfer route is preferred right. Now, tell me what are those areas where technology development would be a better choice rather than technology transfer. So, you should develop technology first of all you should have uh, lots of time, you have got lots of fund. So, you have got R and D resources, you, you have got research and development cell then you should develop your technology right. Many times you can also have the second sources let us say cooperative R and D. So, rather than one company going for R and D uh, a group of companies can go for development of research and development. The third one is contract research. In fact, let us say if you if your organization does not want to develop technology then it can um, that work can be given to some educational institution right. So, that educational institution will develop technology for your organization. In fact, what is happening in pharmaceutical industries uh, these days uh, contract research is taking place. So, uh, you just uh, give uh, the, the contract of R and D to third party right. So, these are couple of uh, sources where technology development should be done right. Now, the question is what kind of technology you should use, should you always use best of the best technology or should you use always 
high end technology or should you use low end technology what what should be the answer the answer is no it's not necessary that you should be using always high end technology the technology should be appropriate for your product or for your project so appropriate technology should be used all the times and we have seen how to evaluate technology there are several factors we have already discussed some of other factors are uh, let's say whether the 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 technology is utilizing local raw material is it uh, helping uh, to protect ecology ecological uh, balance whether it is harmonious with social and cultural conditions so these are just three points as far as evaluation of technology is concerned but there are hundreds of points right before selecting a particular technology okay so let us look at what 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 is the meaning of technical arrangements technical arrangements is nothing but the terms and conditions between buyer and seller of technology so and again it depends on what kind of technology it is uh, let's say uh, if it is a nu nuclear technology so you will have different terms and conditions uh, between two countries isn't it so there are there are hundreds of terms and conditions which you should you should be having uh, between uh, technology buyer and technology seller right let's look at some of the things so uh, the nature will go from will go will go from this particular paragraph the nature of support to be provided by collaborator during designing of the project so is he helping you in designing a new technology is he helping you he means the supplier of the technology is he helping you in selecting and procuring equipment is he helping you in installation erection of those machines and equipment is he ready to uh, give maintenance support is he ready to give you uh, training support so all these things should be looked at whenever you are going for technical arrangements uh, is the supplier of uh, technology ready to give you guarantee in terms of plant capacity product quality and consumption of raw material and utilities right so all these things should be there in terms and conditions and uh, not only uh, it should be there in terms and condition but what if one of the parties don't agree to terms and conditions then what will happen that that's a major problem so the, this that part is to be looked at uh, seriously right otherwise matters will go in court of law or in arbitration right so these points should be taken care of what if one party does not fulfill the promises of agreement right so the price of technology should be should be there in term in, in terms and conditions the continuing benefits of research and development work being done by the collaborator because uh, whenever uh, some technology is being transferred from one organization to another then the benefits which would be reaped who would share that particular benefit no no those, those benefits should be uh, shared whether by the buyer or or by seller and buyer both right so that point is to be taken care of what is the period of collaboration it's whether it's for 5 years or for 10 years or whatever it is right now the assistance to provi to be provided and restrictions to be imposed by the collaborator with respect to exports so this is important point uh, let's say uh, i am a buyer of technology and you are seller of technology you have sold me technology and i am using it for for some purposes right now can i sell that technology to a third party now that is important issue so i so that point is to be written very carefully in in terms and agreement right 
if the technical collaboration is backed by financial collaboration the level of equity participation and the manner of sharing management control as i said whenever you buy technology from supplier of the technology then who would be getting the benefits and in what percentage sometimes technology supplier also gives you financial assistance when when the fellow gives you financial assistance then he would like to have control over management of your organization so to what level that management control will be there these points should be discussed and deliberated carefully let's say then the termination of agreement or other remedies which when either party fails to meet its obligation what if something goes wrong between two parties then what will happen how the the contract will uh, will work if if one of the parties don't fulfill the promises of agreements right so these po uh, such points should be taken care of so let us look at something called material and input utilities because the technology which you are going to use will affect input material and utilities right or material input and utilities will affect technology right so material and utilities may be classified into four broad categories it's not necessarily four but broadly you can classify them into four categories so you have got raw materials and raw materials can be of thousand or lakhs of types isn't it so you can classify them let's say agricultural products so if you are in food processing industry then agricultural products would be raw materials right mineral products if you are in 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 business of mining right so mineral products right livestock or forest products let's say if you are if you are running a paper mill right so your uh, raw material would be forest products right marine products right again food processing industry right so the second type of materials are processed industrial materials and components now you can have let's say assembly or sub assembly or parts or components or isn't it you can have as ab in abc classification you can have c class items like 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 nuts bolts washers and so on right so they are processed industrial materials and components uh, you can also have auxiliary materials and factory supplies auxiliary materials and factory supplies uh, you can have again uh, materials like chemicals right packaging materials so whatever uh, let's say if if you are have got a manufacturing plant then you would be having several packaging materials right and whenever you get um, assemblies and sub assemblies from vendors then you um, you will get those things in again different packages right so you the, the uh, those uh, assemblies and uh, sub assemblies would be having different packaging materials right so it could be wooden or plastic or or or, or, or some aluminum or some other material right oils grease paints and varnishes these are nothing but auxiliary materials and finally you can have utilities uh, can be water or power or steam or fuel right and you can have some other utilities also so broadly we can say that materials are of uh, two types or uh, three types right and the fourth one is utility right so raw material processed industrial materials auxiliary materials and the fourth one is utilities right so these things will play an important role in choosing technology or the technology uh, should suit these things right so with this uh, let me uh, summarize what we have done in today's session we have seen technical analysis and 
how 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 what are different sources of technology how to um, you know use a particular source of technology in which condition you should use which particular source what are different uh, modes of technological transfer what are different stages of technology transfer and we have also seen material inputs and utilities right so in next session we will see some more points which would help you in deciding which kind of technology you should use. Thank you very much.